Hey, what is up, Life Points? Thank you for joining us on for our day of prayer. I actually lost track of the days, but thank you for joining us. I'm not quite sure. That's my mistake, but thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching this live, thank you so much for coming in. Don't forget to turn on notifications for all the future live streams to share it with somebody that you know that might want to watch this or might enjoy this stream. I already nine people. Wow. I'm so glad y'all are here. Um, don't forget that tonight we have prayer gathering via Zoom and the link is on Life Point Church's Facebook at 8.30 p.m. And for those of you who don't know me, I am Jonathan Sierra. I'm one of our students here at LifePoint. And to those of you that are watching this in the future, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> thank you. For those of you who are watching this on YouTube or any other social media platform in the future, thank you for tuning in. We're gonna hold on for a little second so we have time to let, to let everybody join and then we're gonna get into it. It's been about a minute, so I'll just give it a little longer. Also, we have August 15th, Saturday, Saturday morning prayer from 9 to 10. Uh, Angie's in the chat. I miss Reed. I miss Wendy. All right, I think it's time to get into the Word. And so today, I just wanted to go over a few verses from Psalm 51. And for some context, this is part of King David's story. King David, the mighty warrior, the man after God's own heart. And he just sent a text to this phone, because he doesn't know whose phone I'm doing this on. He's just calling me nervous. Whatever. Psalm 51, it's King David, this amazing man, man after God's own heart. But at this point in time, he has just committed adultery and murder. And so he's made a few mistakes. And this was after he sent his friend Uriah into battle to be killed and slept with his wife Bathsheba. So yeah, a lot of mistakes. And he went on to make another mistake after that. He did not go to God after he sinned. He put off opening up his heart to God because... He might have been ashamed. He might have been too distracted. And that struck a familiar chord with me. Not the murder part, but not always wanting to go to God. You see, it's a habit now for me to usually talk to God after I know I've done something wrong. But there are times that I know I've messed up and I'm ashamed. I'm even angry. And going to God doesn't feel like something that I want to do. And so we see David in this situation or he's been putting off God, he um, hasn't been talking to him after this great sin. And it takes Nathan the prophet being sent by God to shed light on David's sin for him to finally realize, oh man, I need to involve God. I need to let God in so he can deal with this. And it's not just me alone. And so we read in Psalm 51 verse one, David says, have mercy on me, O God. And to me, mercy is... It almost seems too good to be true whenever I need it the most. Like, I don't deserve God's forgiveness. It's not right, but that's exactly what mercy is. And it's not too good to be true because we read this in the next two lines. David says, it's according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. You see, I could do nothing but good deeds every day for the rest of my life and it still wouldn't be enough to cover the cost of my sin. It's not about who I am or what I've done. It's about the God that I serve, who he is, and what he's done for me, the sacrifice of his son, that he sent, it's the sacrifice of his son that he sent to die on the cross that covers my sins. And so we read in these next few lines, David asking God, for I, no, he's asking God to 
blot out my transgressions, to wash away all my iniquity, and to cleanse me from my sin. And at first glance, that seems a little redundant to, to blot out, to wash away, to cleanse. It all kind of seems the same, but what I've come to learn is that when things in the Bible seem redundant, it usually just means that I'm not taking a close enough look. And so, from what I've researched, to blot out in this context means to, to wipe away. And it, at first glance, it seems like that might be enough. Like, God, just wipe away my sins so I'll be good. But if you've ever, like, for instance, spilled coffee in your car and gotten it all over the seats and the floor, maybe even the ceiling, you can get a lot of it off, like just with a paper towel or even with your hands, just wipe it off the seat. And it might be dry enough for you to keep on going. But from my own personal experience in my parents' car, I can go back and look and see all the coffee stains everywhere in the car. And David knew this too. David knew that even if God cleared his account with him and he was forgiven for his sins, he was still stained and dirty from his sin. He didn't want God just to work on a surface level with him. He wanted God to go deep and to cleanse him from the very root of his sin, all that sin that had sunk into him. And so he opened up his heart to God after so long. From what I've researched, it was months in which this took place. He finally opened up his heart to God, honestly, openly. He said, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Okay, we're good now. Sorry. What was I? For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. He didn't deny anything. He didn't make any excuses. He said, God, I know what I've done. I know the sin that I've committed. Heavenly Father, I lay it out all before you. So that, Lord, you can, I open up my heart so you can come in and clean what's deep inside of me. And this is what I want for myself and for anybody else who's listening. Whatever sin that we've carried in our hearts for however long, it could be days or weeks or months or years, it's never too much. It's never too long for God to, to work in you. But we need to humbly ask for his forgiveness. We need to open up our hearts in confession to allow his Holy Spirit to guide us. Whatever that might look like, it might not be the same for everybody, but God can heal you and cleanse you from the inside out. And that's what I want in my life. And I know we all sin every day, so hopefully it applies to yours too. Um, I'm going to give a quick prayer for our students and our children here at LifePoint. And so if you want to, wherever you are, just bow your head and close your eyes and we'll pray real fast. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the students and kids here at LifePoint, Lord. They're our future. Heavenly Father, they're what we're investing in, God, and we can't wait to see them all grow up, God, in your house, God, knowing you, loving you. Heavenly Father, that's our, one of our greatest missions here at LifePoint. Lord, I pray for all the staff, all the helpers and workers that invest their weekends, God, their weekdays with the kids, all those that are doing the online stuff to engage the kids, to make it fun, to still bring the church to them in their living room. Thank you so much, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray especially for our students right now, Lord. I'm on that team. I am one of the students. And Heavenly Father, you're doing so much through us, Lord. Um, through the Life Point Academy, um, even just this last week, Lord, you allowed us to help organize the San Antonio food drop-off, and that's amazing, God. I pray that we would do so much more in the future, and you, you would continue to work through us. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would keep us all safe as we go back to school, God, all the kids going back to their elementary, middle, and high school. Heavenly Father, it's whether or not we're going back, Lord, I pray for a great school year, but if we are going back, God, in person, I pray that you would keep us safe, keep us in your hands, God, and we believe that you're sovereign over it all. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so that is the end of it. I'm so sorry. I still don't know what day this is of prayer. It's just blank to my mind, but it'll probably be in the title, so don't worry about it. Don't forget, tonight is our prayer via Zoom. Um, 
at 8.30 p.m. The link is on Blackpoint Facebook. And August 15th, two days from now, Saturday morning prayer at 9 to 10. Um, man, really hope I'm not forgetting something, but I probably am. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for those of you on the Facebook live stream and for everyone that's watching from the future. I hope any part of it might speak to you or help you in some way. But thank you. All right.